So today I want to talk about isolation. Those seasons when for whatever reason we stay away from people, maybe certain people, family, friends, some people. Some say isolation is a good thing. Others say that isolation is a very bad thing. Thing. Now, I think that isolation is a two-edged sword, right? And it really depends on the intention, the motive, you know, the why, the when, the where, the how, and maybe even the who. So let's get right on to talk about this. <laughs> Hi family, you are welcome to another conversation on TY's thoughts and like I said, I want to talk about isolation. If this is your first time here, my name is Uluwa Toing or Uluwa Fumidara. We are welcome to this conversation today where we are talking about the very, for want of a word, interesting concept of isolation. And like I said, some say isolation is good, some say isolation is bad. I am sure that at some point in life, especially on this journey of adulting, <laughs> there have been seasons where we have found ourselves isolated or even we have intentionally isolated ourselves for several diverse reasons. And I want to talk about isolation from what I have learned. Isolation can be good. It can be bad. There might be seasons where really you really need to be by yourself to just really go into that season, soak in all that God is saying, you know, and just really get yourself ready in the zone as you're preparing for your next season. But there are seasons where maybe due to certain issues of life, we find ourselves isolated or we isolate ourselves. And I would like to start by talking about isolation being a trap. Yeah. Isolation can be a very subtle and serious trap of the enemy, especially when we intentionally isolate ourselves, not necessarily because we're pushing in or seeking the face of God or anything of the sort, but maybe because life has happened and we decide to take the stance of isolation. And so when I talk about isolation being a trap, I'll just mention three or four things that can make us go into that season of isolation. Number one being offense. Offense is one of the greatest reasons why people choose to isolate themselves. Someone has done something to you, family has done something to you, your trusted friend has done things to you, you know, maybe your colleagues, you know. Isolation is really all about relationships. We don't isolate ourselves from things or from you know, inanimate objects. We isolate ourselves from people, right? And many times it is when people have offended us, the people that you trusted, the people that you expect better from, the people that you thought would always be there for you, the support structures. Maybe they said a bad word to you. Maybe you got into some form of fight or, you know, some issues, or maybe you even made a mistake and unfortunately they didn't handle it well. There are several things that would cause rifts between ourselves and the people in our lives. But is that a good reason to go into isolation and say, you know what, I never want to talk to these people again. I never want to have anything to do with these people again. These people have offended me. You know, they are bad people. And then we just decide to stay away. People of God, I am sure that the same way that people have offended us is the same way that we have offended people. And if we all always choose to isolate ourselves because people offended us, <laughs> think about how the world will be. And so if there's anyone watching this today and there's some relationships that have you know, gone wrong in our lives and because of that we have isolated ourselves, I want us to reassess that relationship. Now this does not mean that there's some relationships or people that when they've roughed when they've rubbed off, you know, badly on us, it doesn't mean that we should, quote and unquote, stay away or just keep them in one place in their own corner. They are those kinds of people that you know that, you know what, I love you, you love me, we're not fighting, there's nothing, you know, wrong, but I think it's just better that we separate. But there are times, I'm talking specifically to the people that we really should have in our lives. I know sometimes this thing is actually really with family, yeah with family or with friends that are really close friends but because like i said expectations we come to the table with expectations you know this person should treat me like this that person should have been nicer to me this person should have shown me love even if i failed corrected me in love 
we are all a work in progress and what the enemy loves to do what the enemy loves to do, you know i'm reminded right now of that scripture in the book of corinthians where someone had fallen into sin and paul was telling them i will quote it on the screen that let's handle this matter wisely lest the enemy come in and in the process of us correcting and just leaving the person in his own corner the enemy will now come and use that one and scatter the matter more the satan knows how to use offensive in our lives to get us into the place of isolation. And when we are isolated, he would then trap us. It is when you're isolated from people or from the people that you need to be around because it doesn't necessarily mean you are not speaking to anybody in the world. It might be that the people that you really need to be around, the right people, because they have rubbed off on you wrongly, you shut the door on them. And what happens many times is that this opens the door many times to the wrong people, to the wrong places, to the wrong things, to, you know, all sorts of things that should not have come into our our lives because we decided to be isolated from the right people offense is a painful thing it might be betrayal it might be they've spoken the wrong caustic words you know time and time and time and time and time again it might be different kinds of things and there are degrees to this thing. there are some offenses that by the time you even say this is what this person did <laughs> Ah, mercy is such a long rope. And sometimes when I think about, you know, how much God continues to have mercy on us. And he says, be merciful, even as I am merciful. You know, it is a humbling thought when I want to cast maybe judgment or I want to cast certain feelings on people because I feel like they've offended me. And then I either think about how I have offended God or continue to offend God because really it's a daily process, you know. And I'm like, but Tony, God is extending mercy to you. So can you from that mercy drink and extend mercy to someone else? Sometimes it takes only the help of the Holy Spirit to walk in wisdom and to know that don't burn this bridge. Don't close this door. Don't. Don't run from these people. Don't. If you can correct in love, if you can walk in love, if you can walk in mercy, I think we would avoid that trap of isolation that comes from the place of offense, which takes me right into the second one. Now, there is offense when people have done something to you. Then there is defense. <laughs> there is the defensive position that we take when you're like, you know what? People are dramatic. Life is dramatic. I don't want the drama of people. Church people are dramatic. Yes, church people are dramatic. You know why I think that church people are dramatic? Because we all believe that because we've given our lives to Christ and we've become born again, all of us are automatically transformed overnight. So if you are relating with a born again brother or sister, there is now this bar, this standard of perfection that you think that we all bring to the table. Let me ask you, brother or sister, are you perfect? I didn't think so. So why do we put one another under that bar of perfection? Because it's when they don't meet our perfection quota that we then say, you see, trust people. And he said he was a Christian. And she said he was a Christian. Are you not a Christian too? And don't you make mistakes? Don't you fall at times? Don't you say the wrong word? Don't you give off the wrong vibes? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we feel like we church people are dramatic, it's not that we are, it's not that, oh, and she was a prayer warrior. <laughs> the fact that she's a prayer warrior, or she's a choir leader, or she's even the head of evangelism, preaching to people, does not mean that that brother or that sister does not constantly have what God is working on. So many times we remove ourselves from relationships that are God-given, relationships that are from our benefit on the earth, from a place of defense, because you're like, I don't want to have anything to do with these people because I don't even want to be hurt. Let me just help you. If you are in this life, in this earth, that we are you will get hurt let me let, let me just let's let's just shatter that table we human beings unfortunately we are prone to hurting one another we are prone to rubbing off one another wrongly we are prone to making mistakes 
you and I. And it is by the grace of God that at every point in time that we encounter a wrong vibe from another person, we are able to put it in the right perspective. I like to say that nobody is really inherently bad, but we do bad things. But I, by, I, some people are bad, though. <laughs> some people are, in fact, it's, it's not that people are bad, you know, based on backgrounds, experiences, and all those kinds of things, we are all shaped and formed into certain kinds of people. I remember having a conversation with uh, an Aburo of mine, you know, about someone that we could have labeled evil from the pit of hell, literally. Lord have mercy on us. And you know, this Aburo of mine was saying, at some point in time, he started to think about it. But how did these people become like this? That what could have made them like this, that they would do this kind of thing, that there must have been something in their family structure, in the way that they were born. And I really appreciated his perspective because sometimes when you put yourself in another person's shoes, look, for the fact that someone grew up in, for example, a polygamous home, because maybe in that home, especially in polygamous homes where there was competition between first wife, second wife, third wife, fourth wife, everybody had four children, all the four children had to fight for their rights. This person was camping against this person. This person was fighting. Those people already grew up with a certain mindset. So everything to them in life might be competition. Everything to them in life might be playing games. You understand? So when we see people, by the grace of God and Instead of just casting judgments and expressions, it is to be able to take a back seat and really be like, ah, but what could have made this person? Why is this person like this? But that is even another conversation for another day. What we are talking about now is isolation from a place of defense because you are already trying to say, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want people to come into my space and rub, off, rub me off badly. Then you create a wall. Then you have a defense. See, the same way you are trying to keep out bad things is the same way you keep out good things, as long as there is a wall. So your wall keeps out everything, both the good and the bad. I'm reminded once again of that scripture where um, it says that uh, the, the man planted wheat and overnight the enemy came to plant something else. You know, and by the time it grew, his servant said, oh, we planted uh, the wheat but the tears have grown with it. Who did this? And they asked him, should we uproot it? And he said, no, if you uproot the tears, some of the wheat will get affected. Let them grow together. If you close the door on the bad, you will not allow some of the good to also come inside. It is by the grace of God that we are living life every day. And in our interactions with human beings, in whatever happens, we have to learn to open ourselves to the beauty of life and even if with the beauty of life we'll now receive some things that are not beautiful we will by the grace of God work it out and all these things will make us better in the mighty name of Jesus so don't have walls don't have defenses don't shut yourself out don't be in that isolated stage. You are really there, but you are not there. You are giving yourself, but you are not giving all of yourself because it's a trap. And that takes me right into the next one. Isolation because we are busy or distracted. And this is happening to so many of us. So you have relationships or people, you know, that we really should be intentionally nurturing those relationships, intentionally reaching out to those people. But because in this journey of life and living and adulting, we are genuinely distracted. Guys, the distractions are real. We are genuinely busy. You go through a week, you've not even reached out, you've not even called. I mean, these are even your friends. So this is not offense, this is not defense. It's just that you are just busy. Meanwhile, these are your fellow soldiers in the army of the Lord. So what the enemy knows how to do is to keep us away from those people, is to keep us away from those systems, is to keep us away from those structures, is to keep you away from those meetings, is to keep you away from, oh, we're meant to pray at 6 p.m. I had a meeting today, I had this tomorrow, I'm building this, I'm doing that. He keeps you away. He keeps you away from what is the real source of life. 
so that you don't even realize and this for me is one of the most subtle types of isolation you don't even realize that you've not spoken to this person in two weeks or in three weeks you don't even realize that you've missed that prayer meeting you don't even realize that you've not been able to attend that thing that at a certain time in your life <laughs> was your holy grail guys this is a trap do not let business do not let distraction. Meanwhile, maybe you have been doing other things that is not necessary to your destiny, whether it's social media, whether it's a watching film, whether it's a chilling on the flicks, whichever one it is. There are many other things that you sort of have time to do because you have time to do, but you don't place a premium. And it is a premium and it takes a lot of intentionality because like I said, the enemy himself is so wise. It's just going to be subtle. And then you don't place a premium on what you should place a premium on and life is going. And as life is going, it's a source. If you are not receiving from this source, you are definitely receiving from another source. Nobody is kept empty. No, he said, if a man, if there were demons somewhere and they cleaned the place, the demons come and they find nothing there. He said, he will come back with another multitude of demons. So nobody is meant to be kept empty. There is a source. You are either receiving the source of life or you are receiving the source of death. And there's some key relationships in our lives that are the source of life. And sometimes business, distraction, or whatever it is, legitimate and illegitimate. It's even the legitimate ones that are the real problems because you can really justify guys man in the last three weeks work has been so intense school has been so intense life has been so intense i'm so sorry i didn't have time i'll make it up to you <laughs> we've all been in those states do not let business or distractions keep you from what god has for you do not let the enemy make you think that any other thing that is working in your life is fine <laughs> this life is subtle and child of God, if you are a child of God watching this, you need your tribe. You need your people. Don't let life take you away from your tribe. Your tribe is your source. Your tribe is your source, right? And the final trap of isolation, which is also related to business and distraction, but this is when you feel like there are certain people that should, you know, be in your life, but once again, because you are busy or because you are more in the space of some other people. And you know that this happens even in marriage. Do you realize that some people can be married but isolated in the marriage from their spouses? So this is not just that we are talking or we are seeing each other. Sometimes it's an emotional isolation. It's a mental isolation. It's an intimate isolation. So you wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. If you live, for example, in the city of Lagos, you leave your house at 5. Maybe you just saw your spouse. You push her, slept on the bed together. Hopefully you're sleeping on the bed together, you know. And then you saw each other for a short time. You got to work all day. Maybe once in a while, chats and calls. Maybe it doesn't even happen because your work is very demanding. You get back home at 11. By that time, you're really tired. He's really tired as well. She's really tired as well. All you say is one or two words. You sleep. You wake up again. Five. What's going on there? Think about it. Really think about it. That, that is one of the greatest traps. So... It is not that you are not engaging with people. It is that because you are more in the face of some other people, you are not able to engage with the right people. Subtle trap of the enemy. And that's all Satan seeks to do. You know, he doesn't come, he comes with deception. It's many times it's just deception. It's a facade. So in your mind, you are like, um, but I'm around people. I'm not isolated. I mean, I see these people every day. I'm talking to these people every day. Are they the right people? What attention are you giving the right people? What intentionality are you putting on the table for the right people? I had a, a, a brunch with friends about two weeks ago. And in fact, we have been trying to have one of my friends had been saying, let's have this brunch and everybody had been busy, but then it then happened to be her birthday. So we said, okay, you know what? Let us make that brunch she had been asking for her birthday. And it was just such a good time, you know? And you know, she said something funny that 
sometimes you should just learn to do these casual things just for the sake of this tuesday leisure all this busy life all this adult busy life we're living <laughs> You need to intentionally nurture the right relationships is all I'm trying to say with this point so that you are not trapped in that place of being isolated from the right people because you are in the sphere of the wrong people. They are right people and they are wrong people. It's as simple as that. We need to start telling ourselves the truth. We need to start telling ourselves the truth. However, not all isolation is bad. Like I said, it's a two-edged sword. There are some seasons in life where you know that you need to get away. You need to shut down. You need some time out. You need some space. You need to, life has been, you've just been choked. It's been a lot and you've really not had time to just soak in. You've not that time to just, you know, go back to big picture thinking. You've not had time to pause. And in that time of isolation, if you need to shut your phone, you shut your phone. Like I said, it, it's a very, it's a motive that matters. It's the intention that matters. All of those things matter to say, you know what? How can I make this happen? I really need to get away. I really just need to go back. I really just need some time out. I really just need, it can be one day, it can be two days, it can be three days, it can be a week. So sometimes isolation is good. Tell the right people, even as you are waiting, them be praying for me. <laughs> So that in that your time of isolation, the enemy will not be, be filling your mind with what should not be there, right? You might take some time out. You might even just take some time out in your natural space and your natural habitat. Shut things off. It's necessary as well to isolate from devices, to isolate from entertainment, to isolate from all of those things. Because those things cause a lot of log in the brain, Right? Shut things out, shut things down, and just soak in time with the Holy Spirit. It is very important. So isolation can be a trap if you're not checking. Is it coming from a place of offense, a place of defense, a place of business or distractions, or a place of now being, you know, in the sphere of the wrong people and forgetting the who that really matters? But isolation can be good if you are the one intentionally from time to time and it's necessary that we do this periodically because life is intense you know we are the ones that are consciously pulling back and saying i just need to find myself again i just need to breathe i just need to pause i just need to chill i just need to soak in i just need to worship i just need to pray i just need to spend concentrated time it doesn't mean you're not worshiping or praying every day but there are times when you need to give concentrated energy into the presence of God and just take out that time, shut everything out. Just, you're not shutting people out. You're just telling people, guys, I'll be back better, stronger, and wiser. And you take that time off. So where are you? Um, are you one that has fallen in the trap of offense? Are you someone that has built walls of defense? You know, are you someone who is even right now struggling with being busy or distracted? You can always bring yourself back. Life is about every day, it's a real daily thing, just daily checking ourselves, daily checking our hearts. Sometimes we don't even know that we're falling for these traps and you just realize that, ah, it's like there's something on the inside. This person I've not spoken to, why haven't I? Oh, you now realize that something happened, maybe your last conversation, something happened and whether you knew it or not subconsciously, you just like, you know what? Yeah, sometimes it's very subtle. But I'm doing this video to just say, if you are in any of these states, take it first to the Lord in prayer. See, this life is not by power, it's not by might. More than anything, each and every day now, I'm really understanding what it means to lean on the help of the Holy Spirit, to do every single thing, every single thing. There's, there's actually nothing we can do by ourselves if you are a child of God, nothing, <laughs> nothing. Every single point in time, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, show me. And as you engage with him, as you read the word of God, may the Lord help us to keep our hearts pure and steadfast and also teach us how to navigate daily life and living in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I am very sure that you took something out of this. I've come to the end of today's conversation. And 
until the next one stay connected to god like if you've liked this video i'd like to hear your comments as well subscribe and share to your friends enjoy the rest of your day your month your week and the year like joke like joke we are getting into july god is good all the time and all the time god is good bye <laughs>